So, tax and welfare cuts were top of the agenda for both the Conservatives and Labour this morning, after a week where both sides have been accused of not being clear enough about their plans. David Cameron, with shirt sleeves rolled up again, used a speech this morning to firm up on his pledge for no VAT, no income tax, no national insurance rises. While Ed Miliband, with jacket and tie still firmly in place, said that tax credits were in the firing line and that the family budget would be at risk if the Conservatives win next week's election. Let's take a look at these plans in detail. David Cameron today announced that a Conservative government would introduce a tax lock enshrining in law the guarantee of no rise in income tax or VAT on national insurance before 2020. Mr Cameron also reaffirmed the party's pledge to raise the tax-free personal allowance to £12,500, so that's not in the law, and raise the 40p tax threshold to £50,000. Ed Miliband was out this morning criticising the Conservative plans to reduce the welfare budget by £12 billion in the first couple of years of the Parliament too. Labour has also ruled out any increase in VAT or national insurance, but it's not putting that in law. It has said, however, that it would bring back the 50p top income tax rate for those earning over £150,000 a year. And the party will also plan to introduce a mansion tax on homes worth over £2 million a year. Sorry, worth over £2 million. Now, we're joined from Southampton by the former Conservative uh, Foreign Secretary, William Haig, and in the studio, the Shadow Employment Minister, Stephen Timms. Welcome to you both. Thank Mr Haig, let me uh, come to you first. Uh, what percentage of total tax revenues does this uh, legal promise now cover? Well, VAT and income tax are the biggest sources uh, of tax, and of course, national insurance is one of the biggest after that. So, so what percentage does it cover? Well, it covers the great majority of taxation. Well, it covers 67% of uh, tax revenue, 67%, two-thirds. So mm. essentially what you're doing to a future chancellor is taking off the board two-thirds of tax revenues cannot be touched regardless of what happens in the economy. How can that be sensible? Well, because the, the, we want to reduce taxation, and we have been reducing taxes on families over the last five years. We've already cut income tax for 26 million people, but, uh, kept down the fuel duties. Uh, but, we, we've, but there we've could kept be down circumstances where you do have to raise tax. All governments have to. I mean, your government has done it. You, you added uh, two and a half percent to VAT. We may be in some economic crisis where taxes have to go up. We may find ourselves, God forbid, in another war situation. We but, have to move on to a war footing. Why would you count out the freedom to do that? Unless, of course, you just don't think people trust you. Well, because we're in a very different situation now from five years ago. We inherited, as you recall, five years ago, Greek levels of, of deficit, of, of more than 10% of our national income being borrowed every year. We've more than halved that. The, the forecasts of the Independent Office of Budget Responsibility show we're on track to run a surplus by the, on our plans by the end of the next parliament. So if there are unexpected economic events, we are in a completely different financial situation in this country. Uh, from five years ago. So we are able to make these commitments. It does underline, of course, the huge difference on taxation in this election, which is one of the big choices that people are making next week. Uh, you, when you were leader of the opposition, uh, pledged a tax guarantee, which in its own way was kind of similar. You're going to put it in law, a tax guarantee. Uh, John Major described it as, quote, mad. And you had to renege on it because Michael Patillo, then your shadow chancellor, said it was nonsense. Well, I was often ahead of my time uh, as leader of the opposition, although... Or just um, behind the curve. Oh, and nobody thought it at the time. No, uh, but, but John Major is, said it was mad. Uh, well, there is no such disagreement about this because, as I said, we're now in different circumstances and we have the track record uh, of reducing income tax uh, and keeping down national insurance, getting rid of, the, uh, of some of the employers' national insurance for small businesses, for instance, giving them all a £2,000 uh, reduction in that. We have a track record. We've had £10 billion taken off uh, income tax over the last five years at the same time as we've been reducing the deficit and keeping government spending under control. Uh, now, that's a track record the Labour Party don't have. They have the opposite, and people need to know that's the choice next Thursday. Who said no other Chancellor ever felt the need to pass a law to convince people he has the political will to implement his own budget? And that, in, indeed, 
he, he has either no confidence in himself or he has to ask the police for help. Who said well, that? Uh, there you are talking about Gordon Brown's proposals to legislate about reducing the budget mm. deficit. And who I said think. that? And that would be the, uh, George Osborne, a shadow exactly. chancellor, exactly. talking about that. No other chancellor in the long history of his office has ever felt the need to pass a law in order to convince people that he has the political will to implement his own budget. <laughs> As was observed this week, there are only two conclusions. Either the Chancellor has lost confidence in himself to stick to his resolution and is, so to speak, asking the police to help him, <laughs> or he fears that everyone else has lost confidence in his ability to keep his word, but hopes they may believe in the statute book if not in him. And neither are much of a recommendation for the Chancellor of the day. But that was when the, the Chancellor of the time, or the Prime Minister of the time, intended to legislate for the opposite of what he had actually done. This is the different situation I've just been talking about, to legislate to be absolutely clear about continuing what we have been doing. Yes, but it was what about, we are committed it, to do anyway. It was about putting the, a budget uh, uh, strategy into law which is what you're trying to do as well. You're putting a budget strategy into law that two-thirds of tax revenues cannot be touched by the Chancellor in the next Parliament. And, and, and as George Osborne said, this is about a law you have to try to convince people because you yourself haven't got the political will, will to implement your own budget. And people, so low is the trust in politicians that you've got to say you're going to make it law, correct? Well, there is low trust in politics in general and in political commitments. This underlines the commitment, but it is more than that. It is also planning ahead. Uh, you say it's legislating about budgets, but we have legislated ahead of time on many uh, taxes before. And of course, as you know, in, in the last parliament, we've said ahead of time, years ahead, what the rate of corporation tax would be. It's one of the reasons businesses are investing in this country. Yeah, but that was They've an aspiration. The you didn't put it into law. You said that's what you were trying to do. Will the be a, in this um, uh, piece of legislation to cut off any uh, change in the two-thirds of tax revenues in an upward direction, will there be a force majeure clause? Uh, well, uh, it's legislation. It has yeah. the same force as legislation. But will there be a force majeure? Will there be a clause that says, in exceptional circumstances, this will not hold? Well, Parliament can make legislation and can, of course, no, but you're the government. You're proposing it. Will there be that sort it, of clause? It can unmake legislation. So, uh, no, it, it is that's, that will be up to Parliament in the future. So but you, don't, course, you don't know, do you? Well, it will be far more difficult, of course, once yeah. legislation is passed, whatever clauses yeah, but one But you don't know if it. there's going to be a force majeure clause, and I would suggest to you, if there is, it's not what the paper is written on, because governments can invent whatever force majeure they like. Well, no, what you, are, uh, what you are saying is, is it ever possible to change it? Uh, and of course, Parliament can change legislation that it has passed, but for any government having passed this legislation to go back on it and try to change it would be phenomenally difficult, both politically and oh, in Parliament. Just so it does underline the commitment. It, it is similar to previous okay. commitments we've made to reduce taxation over the life of Parliament, such as corporation tax. It's planning ahead and All giving right. people confidence to plan uh, ahead. Since you're going to legislate against the increase in three of the biggest taxes, will you also legislate not to increase tax credits for working families and child benefit? We've already said what we will do on the welfare, but on tax credits for the next two years, uh, which is to freeze working age benefits. Will you legislate uh, not to cut child benefits? Uh, no, I don't think we need to do that, but we have already said what we will do, that we will freeze. Uh, that, that's included in that freeze. And of course, remember that inflation is zero. Uh, we are committed to control the welfare bills overall, something Labour clearly are not uh, committed to. That's why we know we can afford, one of the reasons we can afford to reduce taxation, income tax. Final uh, uh, question to you, Mr. Haig. Um, why wasn't this in your manifesto? Uh, well, because it's important to have things that are announced after the manifesto. That's a perfectly normal thing in general election campaigns. Well, what could be more this important than freezing two-thirds of the country's tax revenues? 
Well, the, the commitment, remember we did make in the manifesto the commitments not to raise income tax or VAT or national insurance. Here we are adding the mechanism that really enforces that. And it's entirely normal and entirely entitled to make additional announcements after the manifesto uh, towards the polling day. All right, Mr. Haig, thank you very much. Thank Good you. Good to mm -hmm. see you again.